All right, ready to dive in. Today, we're going back in time. Woo, sounds fun. Back to the world of 1994, when this little gray box hit the scene and changed everything. The original PlayStation. Yeah, it's hard to imagine the gaming world without it, isn't it? Exactly. But before we get to all the legendary games and those iconic controllers, let's rewind even further back. Okay, way back. Like way, way back to the late 80s. Ah, the era of big hair and even bigger shoulder pads. And Nintendo ruling the gaming world. They were on top of their game, literally, with the NES. But they knew technology was changing. CDs were becoming the next big thing. And he wanted in on the action. So they started looking for a partner to help them develop a CD-ROM add-on for their upcoming console, the Super Nintendo. And who better to partner with than Sony? Right. They were the kings of audio and optical disc technology. It seemed like a match made in gaming heaven. And it almost was. They even started working on a hybrid console. A console that could play both SNES cartridges and CD-based games. They called it, get this, the PlayStation. With a space. With a space. Talk about a blast from the past. But, uh... But this is where things get a little dramatic. A little. Try a lot. Okay, a lot dramatic. Picture this. 1991. The Consumer Electronics Show. Everyone's buzzing about the future of gaming. Sony's ready to unveil this awesome partnership. Champagne on ice. Executives all smiles. And then... Boom! Nintendo drops a bombshell. They announce a partnership with Philips instead. Leaving Sony at the altar, basically. Cold. Can you imagine the shock in that room? I bet those Sony execs were fuming. But, you know, as the saying goes... When one door closes... Another one opens. And this time, the door led Sony right into the heart of the gaming world. Talk about a twist of fate. And it might have been the best thing that ever happened to them. It certainly lit a fire under them. So, what happens next? Enter Ken Kutaragi. Ah, yes. The father of PlayStation. A young engineer at Sony who had been heading up the whole PlayStation project with Nintendo. He sees this whole mess unfold and basically says, hold on, we've got something special here. Let's do this ourselves. And that, my friend, is the moment that changed gaming history forever. But I imagine it wasn't easy convincing Sony to take such a big gamble. Back then, gaming was still seen as kind of a niche hobby. Not exactly the high-end market Sony was known for. Right. A lot of Sony execs thought video games were, you know, not sophisticated enough for a brand like theirs. But Kutaragi, he had a vision, didn't he? He was way ahead of his time. He saw the potential of 3D graphics on home consoles. Something he'd been thinking about since way back in the early 80s when he was working on Sony's System G workstation. So the, the seeds of the PlayStation were planted even before the Nintendo drama. Exactly. And... Thankfully for Kutaragi, and for all of us gamers out there, Sony's CEO at the time, Norio Ogo, was also a bit of a visionary. He saw the potential, too. He gave Kutaragi the green light, and, well... The rest is history. A history that we're about to dive into right now. So buckle up, because things are about to get really interesting. This is where the real revolution begins. So the PlayStation was born kind of from this, like, ashes of betrayal. You know? Yeah, talk about a dramatic origin story. It's like something right out of a video game plot. Totally. But the drama didn't stop there. Right. right. I mean, they still had to actually make the console a success. Oh, yeah, for sure. Releasing a brand new console into a market already dominated by giants like Sega and Nintendo. That's a... That's a David and Goliath situation, if I've ever heard one. Exactly. But Sony, they had a secret weapon. Okay, I'm all ears. Lay it on me. Ken Kutaragi, he wasn't just a brilliant engineer. He was also a gamer, wasn't he? Through and through. He understood what gamers wanted. And what did gamers want? Power. Cutting edge technology. And games that pushed the boundaries of what was possible. And the PlayStation delivered that in spades. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It was unlike anything anyone had seen before. Like, I still remember seeing those first PlayStation games and being completely blown away by the graphics. Right. Games like Ridge Racer and Tekken were mind-blowing at the time. And those 3D graphics, it was like nothing we'd ever experienced on a home console before. Totally. And let's not forget about the CD-ROM format. That was a huge deal. Yeah, no more blowing on cartridges trying to get them to work. Exactly. CDs held so much more data. Which meant games could be bigger, more complex, with richer stories, and better music. And don't even get me started on that iconic PlayStation startup sound. Oh man, chills. It's like a Pavlovian response at this point. Yeah. I hear that sound and I'm instantly transported back to my childhood living room. Me too. But you know, all of that technological wizardry wouldn't have meant much if the games weren't there to back it up. And man, were there some amazing games. We're talking Final Fantasy VII, Crash Bandicoot, Metal Gear Solid. These were the games that defined a generation. 
games that pushed the boundaries of storytelling, gameplay, and what video games could be. And they weren't just hits. They became cultural phenomena. Totally. Everyone was talking about them, playing them, obsessing over them. I remember spending countless hours exploring those worlds, connecting with those characters. It was a special time to be a gamer. It really was. And the PlayStation was at the heart of it all. So... Against all odds, this little console that was born from a broken partnership ended up changing the gaming world forever. And it wasn't done yet. Oh no, not even close. The PlayStation story was just getting started. Because up next, the PlayStation 2. The legend. The PlayStation 2. It's practically royalty in the gaming world. It's an icon for sure. I mean, it's still the best-selling console of all time. Over 155 million units sold. It's mind-boggling. It really is. And think about it. This is a console that launched in the year 2000. We were all worried about Y2K. Right. And here comes this sleek black box that could play DVDs, had incredible graphics. And it was backward compatible with PS1 games. That was huge. It was like Sony knew exactly what gamers wanted. They did, yeah. and they delivered it in a big way. But what was it about the PS2 that made it so special? Well, for starters, it was just so powerful. That Emotion Engine CPU, man, it was a beast. It allowed developers to create these massive, immersive worlds that we'd never seen before. Think Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas, Shadow of the Colossus, Final Fantasy X. These were games that pushed the boundaries of what was possible on a console. They were practically works of art. And the PS2 handled them flawlessly. Plus it had that built-in DVD player, which was a big selling point back then. Oh yeah, standalone DVD players were still pretty pricey at the time. So the PS2 was like this all-in-one entertainment system. Exactly. Games, movies, music, it did it all. It was a game changer, literally. But Sony didn't stop there. They kept innovating. In 2006, they released the PlayStation 3, the PS3. With Blu-ray disc technology, that was another big leap forward. And the PlayStation Network for online gaming? It was a powerful console, but it also had its challenges, right? Yeah, it had a bit of a rough start. The price was pretty steep at launch. $599. That's a lot of dough. And the cell processor, while innovative, was tricky for developers to work with. So there were some growing pains with the PS3. But Sony eventually turned things around. They lowered the price, provided better developer tools. And they released some killer exclusive titles. Uncharted, The Last of Us, Little Big Planet. Games that showcase the PS3's true potential. And then came the PlayStation 4 in 2013. Ah, uh, the PS4. A return to form for Sony. It was powerful, easy to develop for, and had a fantastic lineup of games. Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider-Man, God of War. So many amazing titles. And they really nailed the social aspect of gaming with the PS4. Sharing gameplay clips, streaming, it all became so much easier. The PS4 was a huge success for Sony. Over 117 million units sold. It showed that they were back on top. And then, of course, we have the PlayStation 5. The latest and greatest. That custom SSD is a game changer. No more loading screens. And the ray tracing, the graphics are phenomenal. Plus, the DualSense controller is incredible. The haptic feedback, the adaptive triggers, it's like nothing I've ever experienced before. It adds a whole new level of immersion to gaming. Sony has always been about pushing the boundaries, about innovating. And they've done it again with the PS5. It's amazing to think that it all started with that little gray box back in 1994. From a failed partnership to a global gaming empire, the PlayStation has come a long way. And it's shaped the gaming landscape in ways we probably never could have imagined. It's a legacy of innovation, creativity, and a deep passion for gaming. And I, for one, can't wait to see what the future holds for PlayStation. What new worlds will they create? What incredible experiences await us? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure. The PlayStation has earned its place in gaming history. And it will continue to be a driving force in the industry for years to come. So here's to PlayStation. Happy 30th anniversary. And here's to the future of gaming. Cheers to that. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of PlayStation. It's been a blast. Until next time, keep playing and keep exploring those incredible virtual worlds.